Live at five. I'm doing what I had to do to, uh, you know, take care of my family. A former Harley Davidson of Fargo employee says he was let go for buying a lower priced motorcycle of the same brand from another store. He says it wasn't all in an effort to help pay for treatment for his wife battling cancer. So he called us on our whistleblower hotline. He wants to make sure others are aware of a certain rule. A layoff during the holidays is never easy, but for the Johnson family, that was the least of their worries. Me and my wife have been having little financial issues. My wife's had cancer. You know, she's been remission now, but the way the surgeon explained it to us is radiation is a gift that keeps on giving. Complications from radiation has his wife, Bethany, dealing with multiple surgeries and consistently in and out of the hospital since 2010. They removed the right half of my tongue and they used this to recreate it, and then they removed 46 lymphomas from the right side of my neck. But the Johnsons aren't just stuck with Bethany's medical bills. Then for me, I was out of work for a... Uh, for about nine weeks, I ended up having hernia and disc in my back. An employee of Harley Davidson of Fargo, Ben Johnson says he tried to trade in his road glide that he bought there. It was a great bike. It was probably one of the best bikes I ever owned. But he needed something cheaper. They never got back to me. I was just trying to get something done faster than later. He says he waited at least a week and a half with no response. So he called other Harley dealerships. And within two days, he found something 100 miles out in Alexandria. Well, that got me into a lower payment that was better for you know me and my wife to save some money and put towards medical bills and help us both out. That was on a Monday. By that Friday, right before the holiday weekend, he was called in early to work. I thought they were just going to have him come in to talk to him because it was one of their longer days. Went in and said I was being uh, let go because they can't have employees buying motorcycles from other dealers. What did you say when they said that to you? I told them I was just, I'm doing this to help my family. One of the store owners did respond, but just to say they can't comment on any HR or personnel matters. But another former employee who didn't want to go on camera tells me the same thing happened to him last April. The Johnsons were aware of that situation, but say there was no written rule about this. When James was let go because he bought a bike from Stutzman's, they should have said, just so you are aware, we do not you know, we will not tolerate you buy it, buy it from somebody else. I've never known anything that this could ever happen. Never had an employee handbook. You know, I've been there for over two years. So, I mean, nothing's ever been said in any manager's meeting, any store meeting. But Ben Johnson says he's moving forward and interviewing elsewhere. It sucks, but, you know, one door closes, the other one's open. He says he's less concerned with getting his job back, but wants to make sure this doesn't happen to anyone else. In Fargo, Rose Ziskovitz, Valley News Live. And the two employees who were let go from Harley Davidson of Fargo at two separate times bought Harley Davidson motorcycles from different stores. They say another employee that bought a motorcycle that was not a Harley Davidson didn't lose their job. As mentioned, this story came to us through our whistleblower hotline. So if you need help with an issue or you would like us to uncover the truth, call us at 701-237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will then get on the case and go to work. Well, maybe calm, but we continue to deal with those numbing conditions outside. Let's check in with meteorologist Justin Fanfarelli to get our current conditions. Justin. Yeah, thank you, Christine, and good evening, everybody. The good news is the wind chill warnings have expired at noon today, but we're still under a wind chill advisory through midday tomorrow. For all of us, this means that uh, wind chills will be between 25 and 45 below zero, and it could cause frostbite on, uh, on skin that is exposed in about a half an hour. Now, the temperatures look like this. We're at 7 below zero right now in Fargo, 11 Detroit Lakes and Fergus Falls, 11 below zero also at Devil's Lake and 5 below zero at Jamestown. But Thief River Falls, one of the cold spots, at 17 below zero already into the 5 o'clock hour. Uh, wind chills out toward Devil's Lake, Thief River Falls, below 30 below zero, 24 below at Jamestown, 7 below your wind chill at Fargo. Now, we are seeing mainly dry conditions, just a few passing clouds uh, just off to the uh, south of Bismarck and into the Southern Valley. Other than that, clear skies, and the clear skies will last as we go through this evening and through the overnight, but Temperatures falling into the teens below zero as we'll have a light westerly wind making it feel even worse. So definitely take precautions if you're going to spend any time outdoors. We're going to stay in the frigid air and we have a little bit of snow on the way. We'll get into the details later in the newscast. Sounds good. Thanks, Justin. Mm -hmm. Two adults and one child are dead after being trapped inside a house that caught fire in northern Minnesota. It happened shortly after 1.30 this morning at a home in Hibbing, Minnesota. Officials say one of the three kids was already outside of the home when firefighters arrived. 
Firefighters removed four people, two adults and two other kids from the home. All four had no pulses and were not breathing. Two children had to be resuscitated and one child is still in critical conditions. Temperatures at the time of the fire were reported to be between 20 to 25 below zero, with wind chill pushing it down to 30 below zero. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. And a candle may be to blame for another house fire, this one on Christmas Day. Authorities in Polk County believe a candle may have started the fire in a bedroom when crews were called out for the fire just after four at a home on First Street Northeast. The sheriff's office is still investigating. No one was hurt. Minnesota Attorney General Lori Swanson plans to join a multi-state lawsuit challenging the federal government's repeal of net neutrality rules. Swanson and other attorney generals would sue over the FCC's recent decision to roll back Obama-era rules that guaranteed equal access to the Internet. Minnesota Public Radio reports Swanson, a Democrat, says repealing net neutrality would have a detrimental effect, effect on consumer protection and may also influence how Internet users get political content. Service providers have argued the rules were heavy-handed. They contend they do not intend to block, slow down, or prioritize web traffic as a result of the repeal. A spokesman for Swanson says the lawsuit cannot be filed until the rule change is published in the Federal Register. No messages of goodwill from President Trump on Twitter today. The president called the dossier that he says led to the Russian election meddling probe bogus. And he again had some choice words for Hillary Clinton and the FBI's deputy director. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has our story from Washington. President Trump today slamming the so-called dossier that he says was funded by the Clinton campaign and led to the FBI's Russian election meddling probe. The president tweeting, they used this crooked Hillary pile of garbage as the basis for going after the Trump campaign. Democrats say the president needs to back off. This attack on the FBI is really unprecedented. And I think that Republican leadership, if they want to demonstrate any uh, loyalty, not to the president, but to the country and to our institutions, needs to step up and, and, and say, stop it. But Republicans are coming to his defense. I'm very concerned that, that the DOJ and the FBI, uh, whether you want to call it deep state or what, are kind of off the rails. The president also tweeted a series of blistering attacks Christmas Eve against Deputy FBI Director Andrew McCabe. McCabe's supervision of the investigation into Hillary Clinton's email practices came under fire because his wife's Virginia Senate campaign received contributions from a Clinton ally PAC. But critics say the president should not try to intimidate the FBI Deputy Director. He is saying this stuff about Mr. McCabe, just flat out false uh, on Twitter. It, it's just one more thing that he's doing to try to obstruct the justice in this investigation. McCabe is scheduled to retire as he planned in three months, a decision mocked by the president. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Now, the president did get some good news in terms of the economy today. A report that U.S. home prices went up over 6% from a year ago.